Okay, hi guys, welcome back. Now this is the first in a series of videos about helium mining, concentrating on the RF side of things in terms of coverage and antennas and stuff. Now I've seen tons of videos online from so-called experts regarding helium mining. And one thing that they all seem to highlight is that you absolutely must not have an antenna that's of a high gain at high elevation. Now that advice is rather misguided because if you can get away with it, you should use the highest gain antenna that you can get. So this suggestion of a low gain antenna at high elevation will not do you the best. And in this series of videos, I'm going to explain why that's the case. Now, as I'm sure you know, the main types of antenna for helium mining are omnidirectional, such as dipoles and collinears, and directional antennas, such as log periodics and yagis. Now, as I'm sure you know, the gain is related to the size of the antenna. You'll no doubt have seen some omnihelium antennas kind of that size for a lower gain and really big, you know, like that for a higher gain. And that brings me on to gain. As for antenna gain, there's two parts to it. The first part, the most well-known, would be the directivity part, and that's shown with these code diagrams, more about that later, radiation patterns essentially. And the other part is the antenna efficiency, and that's related to the impedance matching, i.e. how much of the power coming from the miner actually gets to the antenna in the first place, you know, and how much gets reflected back. Now, as for beam width, you'll no doubt have seen these cone diagrams that show that kind of like that, and that's the only area of effective coverage, that being the beam width. <laughs> but more on to that later on. Antenna tilt, there's two forms, mechanical and electrical, but I'll cover that more in a bit. Now, I think that the easiest way of explaining antennas and antenna patterns is to use an analogy to some party balloons. Now, as you know, antenna gain is represented by DBI, and the I refers to a theoretical ideal antenna called an isotropic radiator. And in terms of my balloon analogy, it would kind of look something like this. That is a perfect sphere providing equal coverage in all directions with the antenna in the middle. Now, of course, all antennas aren't like that. This is just a reference. Now, if we were to look at the standard radiation pattern of a dipole antenna, a 2D section would kind of look something like this. If you can imagine my hand here and the selfie stick is the antenna itself, then the radiation pattern would look something like this. That balloon's gone down a bit, so apologies for that. But essentially, you get these two main areas, two main lobes that would provide the coverage in kind of all these directions. And if we compare that to the isotropic theoretical one, kind of like that, you can see then that the gain it provides to my left and to my right, giving a good indication of the gain. And when we look at a higher gain antenna, such as the collinear, that kind of looks the same in theory in 2D, where we have these much bigger areas of coverage. And when we compare it again to the isotropic theoretical radiator, we can see here that even more coverage off to these directions. But you'll also be able to see that kind of down here, there's a loss or a lower amount compared with that theoretical radiator. And that's because you don't get something for nothing. If you want to get more kind of in these directions, you're going to lose it in here. But one thing to note is these radiation diagrams. These don't show the total area. It's not a case that there's coverage in this area, no coverage outside of it, which some of those cone diagrams seem to imply. What these radiation diagrams show is that we've got the maximum coverage here, but these areas are where the power is at least half of that maximum. So round here, you might get a tenth, a hundredth, a thousandth of the, of the signal around here, but you'll still get coverage, and that can be very useful. So again, it's rather misleading. Now again, from this 2D slice of a collinear antenna, if we just looked at one slice, again, that's in theory, but in practice, it looks a bit like this. So in practice, what you find is you still get this main lobe of coverage here with the maximum power here, but you also get coverage to the back with this back lobe and to the sides using these side lobes. So again, no suggestions online with these cone diagrams, but that's the only area of effective coverage is wrong. You still get coverage to the back and to the side, and these can actually provide useful as well, we'll discuss later. And again, if you then compare that to the isotropic I mentioned, then you can see here that there's more coverage off to my right, but you still get a sizable amount of coverage to the back with this back lobe. 
as I was saying, that previous example was kind of a 2D slice of a high gain collinear omni antenna. But if we added all of it together, a 2D slice would look kind of something like this. So you can still see that we've got these main lobes here with the highest power there. But in the middle, we've got a right mess of back lobes and side lobes. But again, they're not insignificant. They can provide useful coverage, as we'll see in the next video. Now, when it comes to tilt, I said there were two forms. Mechanical tilt is where you'll literally get the Omni antenna and physically move it. So you'd kind of get the Omni like that. You'd tilt it like that benefits that you'd get coverage maybe where you want it at a high elevation towards the houses below but the consequence of that is you get this kind of big lobe flying off into space and that's not very helpful is it however electrical tilt does that that is that all of the lobes get pointed down so you don't get some one flying off into space they all provide good coverage below and that's very important if you've got antennas at high elevation. Now, when it comes to commercial networks, we all tend to use high gain, high electrical tilt antennas, anywhere from two to six degrees typically, but anywhere in fact, up to 15 degrees. And that's irrespective of height. Okay, thanks for watching guys. I hope you found it useful and interesting. If you did, then please press subscribe, like, and all that. Leave some comments and I'll get back to you. Cheers.